So this is the 2012 Waves paper for Level 3 Physics. I'm looking at question 1 on the boom pipe. The boom pipe, I didn't say that well. A boom pipe is a simple musical instrument made from a plastic drain pipe. Instructions for making a boom pipe say that a pipe 1.31 metres long will make the musical note C. A tuning fork is labelled 261.6 hertz, middle C. Jan strikes the fork, holds it over the end of the boom pipe, and hears the sound of the tuning fork amplified. Uh, the speed of sound in air is 343 meters per second. Calculate the wavelength of middle C in air. So it looks like we've got enough information to use our wave equation V equals F lambda. Um, so uh, we're looking at the wavelength. So we're looking at the wave, uh, lambda. So V is our speed of sound in air because this air is the medium inside the pipe. And the frequency of our tuning fork, um, which is supposed to be the same frequency uh, as the um, the drain pipe that will amplify, uh, and I'm not getting into a lot of detail here at this stage, just sticking with where the question's at, um, that gives us the frequency. So we can substitute those numbers in, rearrange, lambda equals uh, V over F, and you'd get a wavelength, let's see, of 1.31 meters. Okay, three significant figures, because you've got three significant figures there, and you've got four significant figures there, so you would use the least, which is three significant figures. Next part, that's part one. Uh, part two, draw and label a sketch to identify the positions of nodes and antinodes for middle C. Um, now, let's just go back up a little bit. Um, so 1.31 meters long makes the musical node C. So what we're uh, to understand by that is that the fundamental wavelength will be middle C. So what we're expecting to draw um, is, let's see, um, Draw and label a sketch to identify the positions of nodes and antinodes for middle C. I'll just double check our information because um, the we need the wavelength of middle C. Musical note C. A tuning fork is labelled that. Okay, so it, it seems that our fundamental is what we're after. Um, Oh, wait a minute, no, there was just a little, I knew there was something that was niggling at me about this. This is our wavelength, 1.31 meters, um, for the wavelength of middle C in air. That means, to get middle C produced in our tube, we have to have an entire wavelength. You won't get an entire wavelength unless, uh, unless you have um, the, <coughs> excuse me, the second waveform which can appear in there. Okay, so the second waveform which can appear in here is actually something like this as we draw it in our physics way. Okay, not the greatest uh, to get the links and things right, but you'd have to have anti-nodes uh, at the ends and in the middle, and a node uh, at each of those points. There's my anti-node. Um, so, because uh, remember the pipe length is 1.31 meters, the wavelength, to get a full wavelength in there, has to be 1.31 meters as well. That's not the fundamental. If I just really quickly sketch the fundamental over the top, and there you'll just have an anti-node, uh, sorry, a node in the middle, single node, and an anti-node at either end. So, there's a slight trick, I haven't drawn that greatest, but you get the picture of what I'm trying to communicate. Um, anyway, move on. Part 3, describe how the amplitude and phase of the vibrating air particles vary along the pipe. Your answer may use words or a labelled sketch. Okay, so um, there's, there's a couple of ways to look at this. This is really getting at the concept of what these drawings above are supposed to represent. Um, but basically, uh, anti-nodes are positions of maximum displacement. Um, so what we would expect to see there is um, the particles, remember these are longitudinal sound waves, they're travelling parallel to the direction of wave propagation, which means parallel to the direction of the, the wave. So a, a central, um, at an antinode you're going to get your central um, air particles that are vibrating back and forth in place, they're going to be moving a maximum. Okay, so maximum displacement at all of the antinodes. Um, and our, uh, our, our, we, we represent um, the displacement by showing a vertical displacement um, because it's a bit easier to visualize and to represent. So that's your theory behind it. Um, so at a node, 
And it's also that's also a low pressure zone, which is useful. It's come up in a scholarship physics paper before. So a node um, is a position of minimum or in fact zero uh, displacement for those particles. Um, and so you you could maybe represent it by a smaller arrow or, or just call it a point and say there's no it's minimum uh, or zero um, particle displacement that's what that's all about uh, is there anything else I'm forgetting oh the phase it, it asks you to discuss phase so um, your um, this is this is there's a few very slight uh, tricky bits here but your phase um, basically your positions on the waveform, if you're starting from your common theory and ignoring the situation, positions on the wave, and if you were to represent it like like so, um, this position and this position are at the same uh, phase uh, and going in the same direction, whereas this position is um, exactly 180 degrees or pi radians out of phase, or you, they talk about being out of phase at that uh, point compared to the other parts along the wave. Um, so the central anti-node will be out of phase with the two end anti-nodes. Um, and the two nodes, you can't really talk about phase difference of when the particles are not moving, like if you're looking at it at that level. If you're talking about a trans transverse representation, you would say that they're out of phase with each other as well. So you could say the energy is passing through them differently uh, in different directions at that point. Um, something like that anyway to, to try and describe it okay it's worth reading the marking schedule look at the diagrams they have um, they, they show uh, well yeah they show some useful things you should always check the marking schedules maybe have them alongside while you're listening to me talk okay moving on because we're getting on a bit B uh, Jan closes one end of the pipe and holds the same tuning fork over the other end Explain why the tuning fork will no longer cause resonance in the pipe. You may include a sketch as part of your answer. Okay, well, um, what we need to consider here is now the length, the, the wavelength uh, that can be in the pipe. Okay, and there's a couple of wavelengths. Um, what we should really look at, perhaps, is the wavelength either side of that C note that we had above. So we've got one, we could have the fundamental, which I'll draw in blue as close as I can to it's really hard to draw these really really precisely but so that one there um, the wavelength is going to be 4L which is 4 times 1.31 meters that's clearly um, not right you could also have I'll draw in red um, you'd have a anti-node a node and you'd have to have an uh, another anti-node and node in between there so so I'm drawing those like that to have the spacing um, approximately right. Um, so this one here, um, you've got three quarters of the wave in. So um, you have three quarters of the three three wavelengths. Three quarters of the um, of the wavelength equals L. Okay. So this one over here, putting it in uh, the blue one, putting it in the sense. Um, you've got one quarter of the wavelength equals L, so the wavelength equals 4L, that's, that's just the way that you can choose to describe it. Um, our wavelength above, if we just quickly whip up back to, oh we don't need to whip up there, um, this is, we're dealing with the fundamental, um, in fact we can deal with the, the C note, so let's get a different colour, green, so our C note, the wavelength was um, was equal to L. Okay, so you can see, I mean, there's there's a way you could look at it in terms of odd numbers of wavelengths, um, odd numbers of quarter wavelengths fitting in, um, and that doesn't match doesn't match this condition. So that's one quick way to say it. Um, but what I've been doing is uh, covering all of the possibilities. Let's just do one more. Uh, what's a color we can use? Gray. Gray. It yeah, will do gray. Um, the next waveform that can fit in is an antinode there, still a node there, but this time you've got a node, an antinode, a node, an antinode. So antinode, node, antinode, node. Oh, it's getting confusing to. But anyway, let's draw this. There's a node. There's an antinode. There's a node. There's an antinode. There's a node. Um, sorry, I didn't pick the best colour. Antinode, node, antinode, node. This one you've got uh, five 
quarters of the wavelength. So 5 quarters of the wavelength equals L. Um, so that's more than. So you can't fit any waves into this that match our um, the wavelength for the conditions above. That's essentially what it's getting at. Um, and is there anything else that we need to include there? Um, if you wanted to add some calculations, um, you could uh, maybe calculate exactly what those lengths were um, for for there. For for we've already done it for that one, and for there and for there, and just show that none of them match. But um, I think we've covered the essence of it anyway. C. Uh, Jan adds carbon dioxide from an old fire extinguisher into the closed pipe. This is going to be interesting. Um, she wants to investigate whether the closed pipe can be made to resonate using the 261.6 Hz tuning, uh, tuning fork. Yep, fork, there it is. Um, speed of sound in pure carbon dioxide gas is 259 meters per second. So that's quite a drop, 259 meters per second from 343. Explain how adding carbon dioxide will affect the resonant frequencies in the pipe. That's interesting. Um, so the... Uh, What have we got? The wavelength can't change, so there's no change. Um, the um, speed of sound has changed, and now, so it's dropped. So with the frequency, what you can get into the pipe, if we're sticking with our V equals F lambda, um, because remember the lambda's related to the length of the pipe, which hasn't changed, um, we can see that if the velocity drops, the wavelength stays the same, the frequency will have to drop. So the frequency, uh, the resonant frequencies in the pipe will drop. That's essentially what you're getting at. Um, have I missed anything obvious? No. As just looking at it now, it looks like it's only an achieved question, so I might have got a little bit too detailed. Formula, V equals F lambda, uh, V drops, F has to drop for constant wavelength. Part 2, by carrying out appropriate calculations, 